everyone, it's Anika. I'm in the jungle right now because I'm on Pulau Pinang, Pinang Island in Malaysia. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the fun and beautiful things you can do on Pulau Pinang. Penang Island is the fourth largest island in Malaysia and the most populated island in the country. Penang Island has an airport so it can be reached by flight, ferry and even by car as there are two bridges connecting the island to the mainland, the Penang Bridge and the second Penang Bridge. What I love about Penang is that it is culturally diverse with a population that has Chinese, Malay, Indian and Siamese roots, which is also why it is famous for its amazing cuisine. Penang Island is also famous for its UNESCO World Heritage Site at Georgetown, with its preserved colonial buildings and its unique street art, which is so much fun to explore. But beside its cultural heritage and the great food you can find in Penang, Penang Island also offers an amazing wildlife. I love spending time in nature, that's why the first place I will show you is the habitat. The habitat is located on top of the Penang Hill, from here you have a spectacular view and you can even see smaller surrounding islands. To get to the top of Penang Hill, you have to take the cable car, which is an experience in itself. It's so much fun going up the hill. Prices for a two-way ticket start from 12 ringgit per person. I'd recommend to take the express pass for 40 ringgit for a two-way ticket because it saves a lot of time, as queues can take up to one hour. Once you've reached the top, it is just a few minutes walking distance from the train station to the habitat. Walking into the habitat, you'll feel like you are in a different world, because you're just in midst of the rainforest immediately. You'll be able to hear all of the natural sounds from the animals. Entrance prices for the habitat start at 60 ringgit per person, and you can enjoy unlimited duration along the 1.6 km nature trail. There are many different sites along the way which you can see on the map, but for now we will start with the Canopy Walk. Here you walk on a sky bridge through the forest and the view is simply amazing. You can see a lot of different trees and plants and you might even be able to spot some animals. I could totally spend a few days here and just explore nature because it's so beautiful and it just relaxes you a lot. The proceeds of the habitat support the Habitat Foundation whose mission is to conserve biodiversity. We even managed to capture some monkeys in their natural habitat just enjoying some plants, which is so cute. The park trail is mostly accessible friendly, with a few exceptions. One exception is our next stop, which is the sky bridge. We had to walk up the stairs and from there you have the most amazing view you can imagine. From the sky bridge you have the most incredible view over the whole island. You can even see the two bridges that connect Penang to the main island. One of them is just behind me on this picture. After walking for such a long time, of course we became hungry, so we walked a little bit more to get to Kopi Hutan. Kopi Hutan is a small cafe and they serve freshly brewed coffee and some small snacks and cakes. We spent almost a full day in the habitat and then afterwards in the cafe and this is where we ended our day on Penang Hill. So now it's time for the next recommendation when you are on Penang Island. Visit 
Baotech Tea House. This is such a unique experience where you feel you really come close to the heritage of Penang. When visiting Penang, in my opinion, everyone should at least visit a tea house once. You can find Baotech Tea House on the Michelin Guide. It was founded in 1979. On this wall you can see the history of this tea house. It is still operated by the original family who founded it, now in the third generation. The place is located in Georgetown in a heritage building and you'll feel as you've stepped into a lavish per Anakan house of the 1920s because it's so tastefully decorated. It features beautiful old tile floors and marble antique furniture and the centerpiece of the place is the beautiful moss garden. I was lucky to meet Vanessa, wife of the owner. The tea house specializes in fragrant Chinese teas and you can walk up to the second floor where you'll see another dining area with a very beautiful French inspired decor. Of course we had to try the dim sum with our tea. The white bun is filled with pork barbecue filling, the green one with pandan, the red with red bean and the yellow one with custard. We also had some sesame balls, some reddish cake and some unpictured prawn dumpling noodle soup. Here you can see the tea we ordered. They always filled it up for us so our cups never got empty. Our bill was around 180 ringgits in total. Everything was extremely delicious. I would highly recommend this place and love to go there again soon. As we are still in Georgetown, it is time now for my third recommendation, which is to look out for all of the unique places of Georgetown street art. Georgetown is the capital of the Malaysian state of Penang and it is Malaysia's second largest metropolitan area. It is so much fun walking through Georgetown and exploring street art at every corner. There are even maps that show you the location of the most popular ones. This one is called I can help catch rats. And funnily, this orange cat seems to live here. Georgetown is recognized by UNESCO as a world cultural heritage. You can easily spend a day walking around and just exploring the different sides of the street art. We didn't even find all of them when we were walking around. All of these different kinds of street arts have meaning to them. The one with the cat here is called Love Me Like You Fortune Cat. And they are usually coordinated with many other objects to create three-dimensional works, such as bikes, motorcycles, a swing, and these really give them life and make them so unique. Next, we're going to stay in Georgetown to visit another site that is considered UNESCO World Heritage, the Chu Jetty in Penang. Chu Jetty is one of the six wooden clan jetties in Georgetown on Penang. These jetties feature buildings and are currently inhabited by members of Pen Penang's Chinese immigrant community. Same as visiting the street art in Georgetown, visiting the Chu Jetties is an activity that doesn't cost anything. The history behind it is very interesting as over time 
Different Chinese family groups, known as clans, took over control of each of the jetties, and fees needed to be paid to the clan in charge to use the jetty. This was in the late 19th century, but the family still live there. Now the next place that we are visiting is on a different part of the island. The Butterfly Park, which I highly recommend you visit. The entrance fee for an adult for Malaysians is 59 ringgit per person and for a foreigner 75 ringgit per person. It is such a beautiful place. When you enter, you are immediately surrounded by all the beautiful butterflies. And there are just so many different kinds of them. I get so happy when I see this kind of beauty. That's why I love going to places like this. If you stay calm and are patient, the butterflies may even come to you. This beautiful butterfly came to my hand and it stayed there for a long time. The Penang Butterfly Garden is one of the largest in Malaysia and has around 15,000 free-flying butterflies. I could spend hours just observing the butterflies and taking videos of all the different kinds, but they also have other animals there. The lizards were so much fun to watch, they look like little dragons. The park is called Entopia and was officially opened in 2016. It replaced the old Penang butterfly farm. Besides the butterflies and the lizards, you can also watch frogs, spiders, snakes, koi, catfish, leaf insects, and alligator snapping turtles. And there is another animal I've never seen before, which is the socially active Muscovy duck. Here you can see the alligator snapping turtles. At first I was not sure if they are real, because they're not really moving. But then the longer I stared, I saw some tiny tiny movements. I could show you tons of more videos of butterflies as they have over 60 species. But let's move over to our last adventure on Penang Island, which is the Snake Temple. There are many temples on Penang Island and I could have also shown you Keklok Temple, but I wanted to choose a more dangerous place. So today we are at a place where you can come close to a bunch of venomous snakes and live to tell about it. This is the famous snake temple in Penang. The temple was constructed in 1805 to honor Chur Sukong, a Buddhist monk who lived during the Song dynasty, for his numerous miracles and good deeds, and also for giving shelter to snakes. After completion of the temple, snakes from the surrounding jungle began taking shelter in the temple, so it became known as the Snake Temple. When you enter the temple, first you enter the snake breeding area. You can spot some snakes just freely sitting around, which may be scary to some people, but they don't really move much. There is no glass between you and the snakes here. From the breeding area, you can go out to the main temple area. To visit the snake temple, there is no admission fee or charge. 
you must of course be dressed respectfully. Even though you can spot many venomous snakes everywhere around the temple area, especially in the internal courtyard, you don't really feel a danger at any moment. These snakes are pinning pit vipers, so they could bite. So of course we kept a little bit of distance and just peacefully watched them. It was actually a lot of fun just trying to spot all of the snakes, as they are not that easily spotted straight away. And lastly, this was my favorite snake. We barely even spotted it, but look at the colors, how beautiful is this snake. With this, I will end my video for today. Pulau Penang is a beautiful place to visit. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye!